I'm a radiologist and when I joined the clinic here at the foundation, I also started my PhD program and so my department director, Celso Matos, suggested that I would also join Noam Shemesh's lab. And his lab uh, consists of MRI studies in ultra-high field uh, MRI machines that are used not for medical imaging but for experimental uh, imaging. Inesh and Celso were discussing projects for a PhD and I told them that initially it wouldn't even matter that Inesh just had to practice some simple methods with MRI because it's a completely different kind of MRI because it's not clinical. And we agreed that we could uh, work on whichever sample that you wanted. Given my medical background, I chose uh, lymph nodes extracted from rectal cancer patients. Lymph nodes are small structures to where the tumors can spread, and so I chose them because they are very hard to classify in clinical practice. So initially she practiced it and almost immediately she, she could see differences between malignant nodes and normal nodes. And so we decided to pursue uh, and to improve the technique that we had found that by chance could distinguish the nodes and to one hand understand why those differences in signal were there and on the other hand to see if they would work in the clinic. Basically, when we have affected lymph nodes in colorectal cancer, it means that the normal size distribution of cells gets really altered by the infiltration of big cancer cells. We thought that at least we knew, in principle, how the infiltration of big cells into a medium with small cells would alter the magnetic fields in such a way that we could try to pick it up with the magnetic resonance imaging. And once we could do that, we had to validate are fitting by doing histology in the same tissue as we've done the imaging in. So the technique that we applied to, to make the fusion with um, from the histology to the, the, the preclinical uh, MRI was that uh, it, it's a, a common technique which is called registration and it's the technique that you apply to transform one image into the space of the other. We really wanted to match those two in order to really understand what are the underlying principles, not to just make assumptions, we really wanted to find what were the drivers. So we took the lymph nodes, put them in this super strong scanner, developed the contrast mechanism that we wanted, then we made a translation back to clinical fields, which are 10 times lower, more or less, than that field, and showed that it can still work. Inesh and Celso designed the clinical study. They decided to take patients that were scheduled to undergo surgery anyway and undergo an MRI anyway and add to their normal uh, scan protocol also our new method, the susceptibility perturbation imaging. The same lymph node going from the clinical to the clinical, you lose a lot of information. Still, with that loss of information, we were able to find the, the differences between malignant and benign lymph nodes will it's very striking and, uh, and it was a, a really good result. I think the Champalimau Center for the Unknown was actually the ideal setting for this kind of study because we had the basic aspects of it designed by us, the scientists, the question actually coming from the clinicians and the only way that we could actually go from basic research all the way to clinical translation was to have everyone discussing and interacting on a very, very close basis and a very um, frequent basis and uh, for me it was the first time I ever went from a basic mechanism of a signal all the way into human uh, translation and that was very rewarding actually. Now that we uh, have a good explanation for the differences that we found and we had results in actual patients, what we intend to do is to expand our patient population. Uh, expand our experiment to different machines in different institutions and see if the results are consistent. And if there are, there is an additional step, which is uh, our need to prove that this might have an impact on the overall survival and on the quality of life of the patients. So only if we prove that would this be applicable to the general uh, rectal cancer patient population. The next stages are actually now to A, investigate more about the mechanisms of the signal, B, 
to apply this in different centers in a clinical trial so that it would become an accepted form of diagnosis. Yet another uh, avenue is to try to look at different types of cancer. Because different types of cancer have different types of lymph node involvement, this method could be useful also for other types as well.